Right. Whoops, got my midlife crisis glasses on. Let's make some art. I'm thinking of doing a monarch butterfly. Now there is a couple options out there, but what I'm really trying to do is create an impactful design that's delicate. Now the way that I'm thinking of doing this is creating a 3D form and then taking snippets every 10 mil or so along the body. I'll then export them and cut them out. Once I've cut them out, then I'll reassemble upon a spine and that'll really show us the contour of the butterfly as well as showing delicacy due to the gaps. Right, let's count this up. Right, so we're back from the computer. As you could tell, my blender skills are lacking. Uh, so what happened was I did attempt to make the butterfly form, uh, but then I reminded myself that I'm inadequate and had to contact my mate Tor. He's an amazing uh, modeler and designer, so he ended up making the form. So thanks so much Tor, amazing work like always. Right, let's cut it out on the plasma cutter. Hey, what you waiting for? You think I'm gonna do something funny again? Right, what I've done here is I've marked out a 500 mils. What I'll do is insert this little sieve. That's because I've got all the eyes and all the other small bits of the butterfly cutting out at this section. If I don't do this and to catch them, the bits will fall into the water tray and just disappear. Um, never to be seen again, really. So, uh, let's do that. Here's all the bits cut out now. There is a bit of slag or dross on the bottom, so I like to clean it up with a wire wheel. Now some of these bits, like the the first first couple, as well as the eyes, are too small to hold onto with uh, clamps. So I like to use a switching magnet, simply turning it on and hitting them with the wire wheel. Unfortunately, if you come at too much of an angle and catch the edge, especially with these smaller parts, they will leave the table at Mac 1 and you will never see them again. So, being careful, let's uh, wire wheel these out. As you see, organization is key here. Uh, as soon as you clean them up, you lose your, you lose your number and your order. Having a nice little box here, keeping them in order, fantastic. It's not very fun trying to hold these up against your computer screen squinting to see if they actually line up and which number they correspond to. If you don't, you end up finishing the model, assembling, and then it looking a bit funny because the contours are way off. So, that's a wee hacky for you guys out there who's trying to follow along. Back to it. And uh, there goes my first part. Am I now gonna have a butterfly with only one antenna? Because the other one has just vanished. I have found it. And I'm usually terrible at looking for things and finding things. Uh, but the truth of the matter is I uh, went to grab a new sheet of steel to cut it out on, and guess what was sitting there? That's right. Right. Be more careful than I have been. I shall continue. Secretive, put some gloves on. You're going to be picking this up and manipulating while you work on it just to make sure everything's square. If you don't wear gloves, you're going to end up with these crisscross burns on your hands. Right, let's start. Right, before we weld it up, you can see what I've done here. I've got a copper brick holding in the part, and then I've got a copper weight pulling down the spine just to keep it in place. Now, I like to square it up just by eye. You can use a square to square everything up, but inevitably what happens is when you weld it up, it warps and pulls out of square. You're gonna have to come back with a set of pliers just to make sure everything's even so you get the nicest contour possible. Right, we're gonna weld up the eyes now. Now you can see all the holes are lined up. Now you plug weld it. 
when you're plug welding these, you really do need to make sure your heat goes all the way through, as well as that you don't weld the clamp on. You can tell that the clamp has been welded on before. Not very nice. Right. In all the photos you'll look at a butterfly, especially a monarch butterfly, you'll see it has four legs. But in fact, it has six. But they're usually tucked up on the chest like this. So that's what we're gonna do. We've just finished up the body and now we're onto the wings. Now, we could just weld the wings on as is, but this three-dimensional body with 2D wings really won't be telling a good story. And because we really want to convey the idea of motion, then we really want to curve these. Now, you've got to think of what this model is going to be doing. I'm going to be having it in the garden flying along. So I'm going to be wanting the wings in mid-motion of moving down. Right, now we're welding up the wings. Laying them out and having a look online just at reference images really gives you a good understanding of how and where to place your wings. Right, we're all welded up now. Now we need to make an attachment on the bottom of this, just at the bottom there, so we can stick on a rod and make it hovering. Right, we're just mounting the nub to the butterfly. We've got to keep it square as well as keep the grub screw facing back or at least to an angle where we can access it with an Allen key. Right, we want to make this look as good as we can before we rust it. The way I like to do that is hit the welds with a wire wheel. By doing so, you'll end up cleaning off all the soot and oxidation and you'll end up with a much more even patina over the whole thing. Right, really happy with how the model came out. The curved wings really emulate motion, while the sliced body really shows off delicacy. Now this is core 10, so this rusty layer is actually an oxidized layer that will prevent the rest of the steel rusting through and will give it a long lifespan outside. Right, thanks for watching.